but I just I was watching my brothers play football the whole time oh, and really? I wasn't cheering so they gave up on me with cheering <laughs> What's up, everybody? My name is Adam, and I'm the host of the You Know Adam Same podcast, the show that is dedicated on bringing on passionate people, learning about their stories, and delivering value to entrepreneurs. So if that's what you're interested in, go ahead and follow, like, and subscribe. You know what I'm saying? How's it going, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the You Know Adam Same podcast, where you get to know just a little bit more about people, passions, and all things business. Today, sitting across the way, I have Maya Zavko of Georgia Southern Women's Soccer Team. Looking forward to hearing a little bit more about her story. So welcome to the show. Happy to be here. So to start it off, literally, I got so scared and jumped up into the air when I was passing through the uh, the lobby because Maya was just sitting there. Is there um, a security camera out there? Being Cause, slow. Uh, why? Because I would love to see that. <laughs> I would love to play that back. That would be really funny. Maya, welcome back to Statesboro. Yeah. How's it going? So good. I am so happy to be here yeah. in Statesboro and here, obviously. Absolutely. So, yeah. Tell me about, so where did you go? Like you went to Pittsburgh. Yes. Uh, and what was out in Pittsburgh? So I was working actually at the University of Pittsburgh, um, mm-hmm. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, and I was working with the strength and conditioning um, coaches. That's awesome. Yeah. So how'd you get that opportunity? Is that like an internship or? Yes, it was an internship. Um, I got it through actually some of the coaches and, um, staff members at Georgia Southern. Mm -hmm. Um, they kind of hooked me up. They knew some people through other people, just some really good connections that like made this opportunity come up. So that's it was amazing. Awesome. That's yeah. amazing. Uh, yeah. So, so for some of the audience that are not so familiar with your story, um, tell us a bit, little bit about who you are. Maya Zavko. Am I pronouncing that right? <laughs> yes. Zavko. Yes, Zavko. Yes. Actually, yeah. in Croatian, it's Zovko. Oh, yeah. watch out. Yeah, watch little, out. You know. A little spicy. <laughs> I like yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so I play soccer at Georgia Southern. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been playing soccer my whole life. Um, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Um, yeah, big sport girl, I guess. That's wild. Um, yeah. I guess I try not to make soccer like my whole like life and my identity. Mm. But I mean, that's like I'm like, yeah, I play soccer, you know. What but, position do you play? So a, mm, it depends on the day, I feel like. Really? I, I came into college um, as like an attacking center mid in high school. I played attacking center mid and um, forward. OK. Um, but then I switched to right back defense. OK. Um, and this past spring, I played a little bit um, outside midfield. Okay. So pretty much anywhere I can get on the field, um, I've kind of learned to adapt that way because, you know, spots are, it's always competitive. So yeah. you have to adjust. So yeah, a little bit of everywhere. That's except awesome. Except for center back, center defense. Is that not <laughs> No, I haven't. That... Or goalkeeper. I've never played <laughs> goalkeeper either. So. Uh, do each of these positions, I mean, I'm, I'm not so familiar with the, the game of soccer. Uh, but do each of these positions require a different skill set, like a different kind of level of endurance in terms of like, you know, speed? Or are you looking for, you know, hand, foot connectivity? Yeah. I don't know. What, what. No, definitely. I, that's so funny that you asked. I was just talking to someone about this like, okay. the other day. Um, but I mean, obviously, whoever can get the job done is going to go in that position. I mean, for example, you'd ideally like a tall you know outside back but i mean like obviously i'm not that tall mm-hmm. um but i mean like i said whoever can really get the job done you obviously forwards you'd like to have someone who's really fast but if you can have someone that holds the ball up really well mm. and you know maybe isn't as fast but can play good balls you know like it it, it really depends um That's cool. but yeah and then strength and conditioning. So that's kind of like an area that I think you've identified as a, a passion of yours, right? Yes. Um, why that? Why of, of all things kind of, why is that the direction for you? Yeah. So, well, it actually started off, I'd say like my sophomore year, I came into school and I was a bio major at first. Um, I wanted to go pre-dental. I wanted to become an orthodontist. I, you know, like you have these big dreams when you come into college and um, I think like people will realize like things change, you know, like sometimes the path that you think you want to go on, like you can wake up one morning and figure out you have a new purpose in life. Mm. Um, And I guess when I switched my major from bio to exercise science, I sort of learned um, 
you know, like what my passion was. Like I love influencing people. I love coaching. You know, I've been actually like coaching soccer since high school. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've coached, you know, some middle school girls um, all throughout high school. And I've just truly loved coaching and teaching. Uh -huh. And I didn't really realize that. I'm like, I do this so much, like, and I love it. Why not, you know, keep maybe do something out of it? Mm -hmm. So I changed the exercise science and... I was thinking, you know, maybe I want to be a soccer coach, maybe collegiate soccer coach. Okay. And then, but I'm like, wait, but I love all sports. I love being around sports, you know, and not saying I would ever get sick of soccer because, you know, I love it. But it's like, what if I want to switch it up one day? Mm -hmm. So why not go a path where I can be around soccer and soccer players and maybe other sports too? Mm -hmm. So I would say I kind of like found I was lucky enough as of right now to like realize that I can take a little bit of everything that I like to do, you know, health and fitness, influencing people through coaching and put it all together. Uh -huh. So as of right now, you know, I'm always open minded, like it can always change. But I really think like I found what I'd like to do, uh -huh. you know, because I've pieced everything together. So that's the path. That's I'm awesome. Going on. That's yeah. awesome. And uh, how big of a step did you do you think you took in the right direction by going out to Pittsburgh? Because I think that's scary, yeah. right? Like going yeah. into like a place that you've never been before. Mm -hmm. um, do you did you have any one that you knew out there, like in terms of friends and that sort of thing? Or? I did. I knew um, one of my hometown friends. He plays football over there. Uh -huh. um, so I knew him. You know, he took me in and let me meet all of his friends and okay. helped me, you know, meet other athletes. So like that was really fun mm -hmm. um but yeah no it was pretty it was pretty intimidating at first you know it wasn't until like I was really there in this new city with new responsibilities and really only knowing one person in the whole city um it was intimidating but back to the original question like <clears throat> excuse me it was very um huge step it yeah. was, you know, a giant step. And I didn't, it didn't really hit me till like after I was done with it. You know, it was kind of like, a, I just did that kind of moment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, leading up to it, like I was, didn't know what to expect. Like I was excited, a little nervous, but it's like, I was really exposed to, you know, what I thought I wanted to do. And it really helped me realize that this is what I would really enjoy to do. That's awesome. So, yeah, That's it was awesome. huge. Uh, favorite memory from, uh, I guess, Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah. I have tons. I had a great month. What's it like? What's Pittsburgh like? It, it's very city, mm -hmm. um, more city than I imagined. You know, I'm like 20 minutes um, outside of the city of downtown Cleveland. So okay. I've never really like lived in the city. But okay. University of Pittsburgh is in the city. OK. Um, but yeah, it, it's a great city, great um, town, everything. My favorite memory let me think. Obviously, the entire internship. Yeah. I got to work with a lot of, you know, the athletes and the women's soccer team, especially. Okay. That was a great experience. How was that? Oh, uh, it like... was awesome. Uh -huh. It was so good. Um, It was a little, not, I don't want to use the word weird, but that's the first word to come to mind. Like, I have girls, like, that are older than me and even my age, you know, calling me Coach Maya. Oh, where really? it's like, you know, oh, where, snap. yeah. So that was kind of different, you know. I had to um, separate the athlete and me to the coach, but I mean, it was just, it was awesome. But um, what type of coach are you? you? You hard on the players? Are you like drilling them or I am, what's the vibe? Let me think. Uh, I think I am a pretty, you know, vocal coach, but I am the type of coach where it's like, okay, if, like if you, like you can't, what's the saying? Like you can't make a horse drink water. You uh -huh. can lead it to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm that kind of coach. Okay. Like I can be like, here's this. I'm gonna help you. But if you don't want to do it, I don't know what to tell you. I, I have uh, like I've I've spoke with uh, JG. Uh, he's oh, kind of yeah. like a lo local coach um, in these areas, and uh, you know one of the questions that comes up, you know, pretty often in my mind is like, there's a difference between like. I guess inspiring, right? Yeah. Like inspiration. And then the other side is kind of like fear based, right? Where it's like, I don't want to make the person mad. And when you, when you have these two, you know, it's very effective, you know, like looking at it from like a objective point of view, if there is that almost fear of like, hey, like you're getting pushed. Mm -hmm. And I think to a, to a certain extent, I think it's uh, necessary, right? right? Uh, of course, we want to like, have the the hopes that people themselves will want it because i think that at the end of the day is more powerful 
But when you compare the two, I mean, have you had some coaches that uh, have a mix of the two? Have you had some coaches that are harder on you? Like, what do you think is uh, most effective? Yeah, so I've actually had um, a lot of coaches, thankfully, that like allowed me to see the different types of coaching you can have. Um, I personally think the more effective one is, you know, here's this, take what you need from Mm -hmm. it and see what you do. Mm -hmm. Um, Just because, you know, that's also how I was raised. You know, my parents, like they provided everything for me. Mm -hmm. But I think the reason I am the way that I am today is they weren't like, you have to go do this. Mm. You have to go work out. You know, my dad, like he used to say, like when I committed to college, like he was like, I never had to tell her to go work out. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. He would say to me, you know, did you work out today? Like, you know, throw it in there. But he was never like, go do this, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's what created, you know, that sort of like urgency in me to kind of, you know, get up. Independence, and, yes. actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. It was never go do this. It was, did you do this? Sure. And it made me realize, you know, like I get to do this, yeah. not I have to, mm-hmm. you know, and that's like a mentality that I keep day to day. Like I don't have to do things. I get to do them. And I really think that that's why, mm-hmm. you know. Do you think it's case by case? Because like obviously like I think, you know, in your situation having, you know, the family structure that was encouraging that kind of like, you know, provided that means of support was very beneficial to you. Mm -hmm. right? But are there certain cases where, yes, you do need that kind of like nudge towards the right direction? I think so. Mm. Definitely. Back to, you know, having those resources. um, I think when you realize that you have that support and you, you know, have those resources, like you're able to go on and, you know, see what you can do with them and then make the most out of it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I truly do think so. That's good. Yeah. Um, I want to do some hot takes. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, what is your take? And I don't even know if you're allowed to say anything just due to kind of like you being a sports yeah, no, like we'll individual or whatever. But, you know, is there a take that you have in terms of kind of uh, this huge kind of thing that is happening within women's sports mm-hmm. where like trans like athletes are now entering the sport? Yeah. Uh, is that something that you have a take on or like do you have any thoughts on that? So I forget um, the girl's name. Do you know her name? Mm -mm. She has been speaking out about it a lot. Yes. Or a soccer player. Yes, the swimmer. swimmer. Yeah, yeah. I I know what you're talking about. The swimmer. Um, You know, I can see where she's coming from, definitely. Um, But another statement that I can also make about, um, I'd say, like, the talk about it, like, for example, the United States Women's National Team has been coming out and they are saying, you know, this is wrong. This is um, I'd say until I'm in a situation like that, mm-hmm. I can't speak much about it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I will say I think it's also wrong, like for them, if they're not in that situation yet either. Sure. They shouldn't be able to talk about it either. Sure. Because what if they say something and then their daughters grow up and then their spot gets taken or their opportunity, just like that swimmers did, gets taken away from them. Yeah. Um, But that's just my opinion. You know, I have, I'm not in that situation. I think the swimmer, obviously. Very diplomatic answer. Right. I know. But I'm just saying, like, I think that swimmer who, you know, had to share a trophy and had to, um, you know, didn't get, I think I saw something she didn't get the trophy itself they gave yeah. it to um the other swimmer leah thomas to take pictures with mm, it yeah i think that's um not fair sure. no matter who you are sure um so like i said i just think she has the credibility to speak on it mm-hmm. um but at the end of the day it's opinion for everyone i mean have you are there any teams right now currently in the conference in sunbelt that has a situation like that Not that I'm aware of. Mm. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, but the topic is constantly growing. So, I mean, every single day. So, Uh, so, I mean, let's say that we were hypothetically uh, in a situation where you were playing against Mm -hmm. um, somebody uh, that had, you know, a trans athlete uh, on the field. And, you know, they have done a certain amount of work to obtain a position right right like i mean like we said before i mean these are super highly competitive like positions that people have to compete for right Right. and you know due to you know the situation like they 
either win or like uh, they lose or whatever. Like, I, I think they, they play the game. Do you think that there is a possibility or impact that that person could have on the field? Like, you know, that is at a, are you, let me phrase this. Are you put at a disadvantage at all because there is uh, a trans athlete on the field? Yeah, you know, I think from a genetic standpoint, um, okay. scientific standpoint, or just genetics in general, yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but being the competitive athlete I am, in the moment, I you know I grew up with three brothers. Uh -huh. You know, I'm highly competitive. Uh -huh. I am not the oh she plays like a girl. You know, you know it's Got like you. the situation you're in you take it head on and mm. you deal with it and you do it mm -hmm. um but i mean personally i don't think i would you know sit there stop the game and cry about the situation and not you know do it you, so um, you would wait till after everything transpired and then right. kind of like yeah yeah but i mean like from your question do i think i'm at a disadvantage mm. that's that's a good question. Mm. Um, I think it depends on the day. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. That's that's a tough question. That's OK. But so let's kind of like uh, go to another topic. Uh, what are your thoughts on this whole Titan thing? The uh, Did you hear about the submarine? Oh, yes, I did. The one that exploded. Yeah. Yeah, that I think it was really sad. And like, I'm all for like memes and jokes but i don't really like how people were making memes of it like it actually made me Twitter sad was vicious oh and yeah tiktok was really bad <laughs> what was it yeah no that was really sad mm. um i think you know it's interesting there's a bunch of you know conspiracy theories on yeah. it um but yeah i think it's very sad and obviously very unfortunate mm -hmm. um now would i have gotten in that definitely not you don't think so? Oh, no. Are you not an explorer? I am, but I am... Skydiving? I would go skydiving. Would you? I think I would. I keep saying I would. Scuba diving? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> now or even before? Just in general. Um, Too dangerous? I'm not necessarily afraid of water or the ocean, uh -huh. but actually now that I think about it, I probably am because... <laughs> That's really scary because I don't know what's down there. I don't know what can come from any angle at any time. What about diving? Like, what about like you know, um, like diving into like cliff diving? Mm -hmm. The idea of it sounds fun, uh -huh. and I'd like to think that I can do it. <laughs> yeah. I think I would. I think that's okay. Yeah. I, I mean, think... if you if there's there's a connection between skydiving and you know diving off of a cliff. Yeah. Because they're they're like. At some point, there's an ability to get out. But when you are in the depths yeah. and the only thing that's providing you oxygen is your tank, yeah. that's a little bit no, scary that, because it's like a me mechanical type Yeah, of no, thing. that is very scary. I mean, if I like woke up and got like a Starbucks coffee and then <laughs> then I probably would go the skydiving. The solution is Starbucks. Yeah, then I probably would do something like that. What's your Starbucks order? Um. So recently I've been getting Venti's. I used to just get the little grandes, mm -hmm. but I get an ice shake and espresso um, with a splash of vanilla sweet cream. Mm -hmm. And my teammates, Faith and Smith, put me on that. So thanks, guys. Shout out. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> yeah. So, because I'm not a really big coffee person. You're not? Like, I will really only drink Starbucks. Where's the energy come from? You, I mean, you know, we've known each other for some time yeah. now. And al always, like, you got a smile on your face, you got, you know, a positive attitude. Um, what, where does that come from? Um, if it ain't coffee. <laughs> it, well, sometimes it is coffee, <laughs> but I really don't drink like caffeine that much. Okay. This, I'd say this past semester, I really have started, mm -hmm. um, after we started morning practices and I had class and stuff, but my positive energy, I mean, I don't know. I think I have a decent outlook on life. I think I've, I'm still obviously figuring it, figuring it out every single day. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I mean, if we're getting, you know, really deep here, I really think like I rely on my faith a lot, mm. you know, and at the end of the day, like I'm on God's plan um, and whatever happens in the day, you know, good and bad um, obviously comes from him. Mm. And, you know, I'm really, really like good with remembering like 
I'm not going to know my bad day or my good days if I don't have bad days. Mm. So I've gotten into this good sort of thing. Like when I have a bad day, I'm like, okay, this is a bad day. Like we're going to accept it and it's going to show for something good one day. Um, And I like to tell like my friends and my family that um, I was actually having a conversation with one of my hometown friends like about this not too long ago. Um, Just like the same thing. Like it sucks right now, but if you didn't feel this, you would never know when you're having a good day, Mm. you know, so. Love it. Perspective. Yes. That's huge. Perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Let's uh, let's switch the topic to NIL. Okay. Um, so I think that's actually how we initially started kind of uh, communicating. Yeah. Uh, in, uh, for those that don't know what NIL is, uh, let's get a little explanation of what you can do with it. Yeah. So NIL, name, image, likeness, mm-hmm. um, it's new. Newer, I would say. When did I'd say it's been almost two years, my sophomore I think it was year? Like middle of COVID when it yeah. got released. I remember yeah. that. So basically, in my opinion, it's just a whole new way of getting opportunities. Mm-hmm. Not even with money, but with you know networking, mm-hmm. experiencing things. You know, I tell my teammates now, like with all this new NIL stuff, like it's an opportunity. I only have one to two more years left. Um, of being able to do this. So I want to take advantage of it. You know, and I tell them the same thing. I'm like, we can do things now that we wouldn't necessarily be able to do ever, you know, because like we have this platform, we are on this team, we get to be a part of like a great program like we're in at Georgia Southern. Um, So it's like, you know, take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously, like you see the big, bigger um, athletes at the bigger name brand schools um that like are getting a lot of things from it like money new opportunities you know um but i mean like we're we're building this up we're building our names um same with like georgia southern in general Mm. um obviously we're a great like nice division one school but like being that smaller um you know mid-major school like not only are we representing ourselves, we're representing this school too. Mm -hmm. So it's like me possibly, you know, building my brand or building what I want to do in the future. I'm also trying to help build what I want to leave here, Mm -hmm. you know, when I'm done. So it's not just about the athlete. It's about the school you're at. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So Um, diving a little bit more deeper into kind of like, you know, what has changed. uh, I think, Previously, uh, in years before, before NIO was passed, college athletes were actually not allowed to promote themselves, Mm -hmm. uh, accept cash payment for their brand. Right. right? And that was actually actually a big thing. I think, you know, there was a ton of uh, scandals. Uh, There were a few kind of uh, things, especially in college football, where people were, you know, accepting gifts, um, you know, underneath the table, Mm -hmm. so forth and so on. Uh, but once this law changed, uh, brands were now allowed to work directly with the athletes um, because, you know, this industry is huge now, mm-hmm. uh, college sports in, in general, and be able to leverage their uh, name, image, and likeness for the promo- like purpose of promotion. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, what interested me about it was, like, I, I always like to uh, live on the edge, right? Like, so, for example, like, AI is, like, really big in, in, yeah. my, in my arena right now. Like, I'm, I'm always, like, kind of looking towards, like, the future. Mm-hmm. And when this when this thing kind of, like, altered, I was like, wow, there's a huge opportunity. Uh, locally with restaurants that, you know, I've uh, worked with, uh, I remember um, there was uh, an athlete, a basketball player, a Japanese basketball player. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you ever watched him play. Um, he's, I don't can't get grab, grasp his name yeah. right now. But now he is actually uh, coaching in Japan. And I remember uh, bringing him uh, into the restaurant. And we actually, because I have a sushi restaurant, right? Like I have a uh, Soyomi Asian kitchen. Uh, we rolled a sushi roll together, me and him. And I remember him calling uh, the athletic department and was kind of questioning, like, am I allowed to do this? Because this was pre. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was like, hey, like, I don't know if like I can because what I wanted to do was promote the role. Yeah. And then use his name. No, and then can I push yeah. it out? Right. Uh, and I remember that. And so now, like, the game has really changed. Oh, yeah. How have you taken advantage of these changes that are currently happening? Yeah. So, I mean, I would say 
like I like going back, like it's provided me a lot of opportunities, like just n- networking, building relationships. Um, and like I said, at the end of the day, like it's not all about the money. Yeah. Um, like I, for example, have been working with, you know, Smoothie King in Statesboro. Mm. Um, and there's a lot of us at really? Georgia Southern. Yeah. That's awesome. That have, you know, gotten this, you know, opportunity. And like to some, it might just be like, oh, like that's, that's cute. But I mean, like it's fun. Yeah. You know, like I really enjoy it. Yeah. You know, I like being able to, you know, say like, oh, like I am a Smoothie King athlete. Like, and like I said, to others, it might not be. My favorite part is you finally got your picture on the wall. That's like, what it I'm took, saying. It took forever. Like. That's what I'm saying. My picture is on the wall. <laughs> and, you know, like, I think that's cool. It is cool. I think it is. Yeah. And some people might not. And that is okay. But, like, I think it's cool. Yeah. Um. So it's kind of fun. Like, I get to be a part of, like, a local, you know, little business yep. Um. in Statesboro. That's right. So, and that means a lot to me. Yeah. Um. But, um, what are the obligations there? Like, what do you do for them? Do you just kind of uh, go in and regularly post? Mm-hmm. Or is there like an expectation? Is there a contract? How does this thing roll? I did sign something. Okay. Um, I guess it was a contract. But I mean, nothing like super crazy. serious, crazy. But um, no, you do have to go in. You get a free smoothie a week. Okay. And um, they expect you to post okay. um, as free as frequently as you can so obviously at least once a week sure um and, and what is the smoothie king order what we got going on there i get the mixed berry okay i i honestly don't know the the full name every time i go in there i'm like can you give me the mixed berry one and they're I like hate oh when, yeah i hate it when they change their menu yeah i know and i look at the menu i'm like i'm looking for my order and it's I know. just like berry i gave up but they actually know i don't want to say they like know my order oh, but they no 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 <laughs> they know what? No. They already have your order ready when you walk in through the door. No, they know what I'm talking about. When I'm like, can I get the mixed berry um, and a scoop of whey protein? Uh-huh. You know, big protein. <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> that was really cringy. But yeah, I, it's get, all good. I get the whey protein uh-huh. um, in the mixed berry and it's really good. Yeah. I really enjoy it. But sometimes I will be in the mood for like the protein um, peanut butter one. Uh-huh. I really like that. Got you. It depends on the day. Got you. But yeah. So Smoothie King has been, you know, a great one um, and so fun, you know, to be a part of. Um, Who else have you worked with? Um, so still, actually, one of my very first um, ambassador programs that I started with was um, BioLite. Mm. And I'm still actually um, like representing them and working with them and posting them. Um, that is so a, that's, that's an industry that's completely like came out of nowhere too. Right. Yeah. No, they are awesome. Like their whole like business and company is just like, they are so awesome. What is, what does BioLite do? So it's a sports drink, an mm-hmm. electrolyte drink. It's pretty similar to, I'd say like body armor or liquid IV. Um, I like it better than probably both of those. Uh-huh. Um, Cause you're sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. No, but really, I'm not <laughs> I'm even kidding. kidding. No, I actually do. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, no, they it's great. They have um, obviously like a lot of electrolytes in it. It's sure. you know, sports recovery drink, mm-hmm. which is actually like bigger than some people think because you can drink as much water as you want. But if you're not getting electrolytes, it's just going not doing anything. For how, you. Uh, how frequently are you drinking biolites? Like, do um, you do one after every every workout? Just I to try tonight? to. Yeah, and even um, for hydration before, mm. like at night before, um, especially like going into camp, like in two games weeks preseason. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, before games, like does it make I, a difference? I think so. Mm. I definitely do. Um, but you know, I was drinking them before I was even, you know, a part of their, uh-huh. um, I guess, the BioLite team, like their yeah. their company. Um, so that's been really cool. You know, like working with something that I used to like drink before yeah and i was even a thing like that's, awesome. that's really cool to me um but yeah it's fun i get to i like got my family involved in it you know they drink them all they order um yeah so that's kind of fun and it's funny because my dad is like maya i was sick and i drink one of those and i feel so good <laughs> and i'm like daddy you don't have to lie he's like no really yeah like these are the real deal and i'm that's like awesome. okay but he also just supports me, so I like it. <laughs> I don't know. I like it. Yeah. Um, what like are there any other brands that you're currently working with, or you worked with in the past? Um, 
I'm still working with Victory Insoles. Okay. So they are a, a sports insole company. Um, I think they make them for tennis shoes as well, but um, they make them for cleats. Mm-hmm. Um, I wear them in my cleats. They just help with, um, you know, like ankle stability and um, like your vertical and help you jump. Just extra support. How, how, you know? how much higher does it make you jump? Probably like 10 inches. Whoa, I'm just kidding. That's wild. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, but I do. I really like them uh-huh. a lot. Um, I want to say it's been, they were also one of my first. Really? Um, yeah. That's awesome. Ones that I started working with. So that's been really fun. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's fun doing ones that like are obviously incorporated in my sport. Sure. You know, I drink BioLites before games and, you know, and I don't know. It's just, it's cool to me. Yeah. It's fun. How is the the state of I guess women's soccer uh, in the U.S. right now? I think so far it's still growing. It's mm. we're doing well. You know, the World Cup is coming up. The United States women's national team is play about to play. Is it? I know Australia. That, I know that uh, isn't Atlanta supposed to be uh, the place where the World Cup is happening? The next one. The next. I want to say not not so they are off schedule from the women's world cup yes okay yes got you yeah. is it the same organization yes okay the got fifa it. yeah got you. fifa world cup got you um but it's actually so cool to see because there are so many young female soccer players that like are now playing in the world cup mm-hmm. i think um the one younger one i think she's only 18 she's 18 mm-hmm. yeah she's very very young she just made the world cup um, roster, so that's really fun to watch. That's I amazing. Mean, yeah, it is so amazing. But I mean, you know, there's a little part of me where I'm like, dang, like I'm I'm 21 and she's 18 and she's playing. What am I doing? You know. But and what do you think that is? Do you think that's like? Do you think that there is a genetic aspect of it? Do you think that it's like just luck? Like what? Where? What? What are the elements that are in here that have allowed somebody that, that's you know 18 and playing on literally like the biggest stage yeah. that? you can for this sport yeah you know i wouldn't say luck because Mm. well maybe it is i mean (laughs) no actually i wouldn't say luck because you know people could say oh she got really lucky but it's like you don't know what she does yeah you know like that's just not fair to say now when it comes to genetics i do personally think that plays a good like good role um i think i would probably be playing the world cup right now if my mom wasn't a cheerleader when she was (laughs) i'm kidding did you cheer at all no no (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, I think for a little bit I did um, when I was like really little. Uh-huh. Um, but I just I was watching my brothers play football the whole time, oh, and really? I wasn't cheering, so they gave up on me with cheering. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I do think genetics play a decent role. Yeah. Um, in it, but no, these girls like they like it's just it's growing and growing, and I think this is like one. I think it said that there were like. 12 or so players that are playing or making their world cup debut Mm. this upcoming world cup so i mean that's insane there's also a 15 year old that's playing the nwsl right now yeah 15 she yeah and she's doing very well Mm. so i'd say genetics might play when you watch these players play like you know these like 15 18 year 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 old play like do you do you see kind of like the skill level like are they just performing at like just a very very high level Oh, yeah, they are. They it is different level, Mm. Um, you know, and being a division one athlete, like you're around so many different athletes, Um, even before I got here, like playing at club soccer, Mm -hmm. um, playing just with so many different kinds of, excuse me, athletes like you see the different levels. But it's like you get to a point where you're watching these like girls and it's just it's different. Like Mm. it's a different they're just built different. Like <laughs> as like, like cliche to say, like it is just, they're different. It's just, it's different. You think, you think that's uh, like you can out train them or it's just. You know, I think when it comes to a training standpoint, um, that obviously plays a really big role. Mm-hmm. Um, but also it depends, you know, because like you can be doing the exact same training as a girl and be keeping up. But then it's like when you hit the field, it can be so different and yeah. you can't keep up, you know? Um, so, yeah, it just depends. Nice. But. Um, you you said something in here that caught my attention. Oh, uh, gosh. It's when, why? I'm scared. <laughs> it, it was uh, about kind of like when you were cheering and then you were watching kind of like your brothers play 
uh, football. Yeah. Um, what age were you? Like, take take me through the journey, right? Like, Ooh. how did you get into like the soccer like aspect? Okay, so I just have this one picture in my head from the only picture I have in a cheer uniform. <laughs> I had to have at least been like eight years old maybe mm. like i was i was young mm-hmm. um but i was also playing soccer at that time like i started playing soccer from since i could walk pretty yeah. much so soccer came before you yes oh um, definitely soccer so your mom must have been like oh, hopefully please yeah please. <laughs> no soccer came before everything um you know my dad played um he, oh, had, he did mm-hmm, nice he had all my brothers play too um so yeah i cheered i i don't know how my parents did it really like yeah. um yeah, so I cheered a little bit um, for my brothers while they played football, and it just – I was just not into it at all. At but, all? At all. But I did try. Uh-huh. I tried, so that was good. Um, but when middle school came around, um, you know, I obviously was playing club soccer, and I was also playing basketball at the time. But then I also was playing volleyball. You were playing everything. Yeah, I know. Now that I think about it, that's – yeah, I don't. I like I said, I don't know how. So, what was the point to make you say like, "Hey, soccer is the route to go"? I think I just enjoyed it the most. Mm-hmm. I really did, um, and because I know that for a fact, because it's not like I could say, "Oh, that's the one I was the best at," <clears throat> because you were good at all of them. No, <laughs> no, I actually was going the opposite route. Like, I have not like I'm still growing as a soccer player sure. and I have or I haven't been at this level you know my whole life obviously sure like I can say I'm a better soccer player than I was my freshman year I got here mm-hmm. you know like I didn't have it the way um at least from my perspective like what a lot of the other girls had it mm. you know like um some girls like they had it right off the bat you know in middle school like killing it at club like I had to really climb the ladder oh really um, yeah so I think I just you know stuck with it because I truly enjoyed it. I liked the process of it. You know, I played basketball, I played volleyball, um, but I just enjoyed it. I liked how hard it was. Um, But yeah, I'd say I've kind of mixed around all the sports, but here I am. Um, So when you were playing, you know, I think there is a effort that it takes to then play for a college, right? Mm -hmm. And so at what point did that turn for you? Were you like, and at what point did you leave kind of like the volleyball and um, the basketball? Yeah. So I was in middle school when I decided and set the goal that I wanted to play Division One soccer. Um, and even though I still played multiple sports throughout middle school and high school, like that was still always the goal. Um, and I'm grateful that my parents allowed me to do that because I also was playing club soccer. Um, You know, I wasn't just focusing on soccer at the time, but I still had this goal that I wanted to play Division One soccer. And looking back at it now, you know, I probably would have been a little bit better if I just focused on soccer. Uh But I wanted to do all these things. Um, But, yeah, it was definitely middle school when I decided. And then I'd say when high school soccer came around, I just I loved it. Mm-hmm. I had so much fun. I had a better high school soccer experience than I did club. And that's sort of rare. Like you can go around and ask girls like, did you have fun in high school playing soccer? And some were like, oh, no, it, they just weren't that good. But I had a great like I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for like my high school soccer experience. That's awesome. Um, But yeah, I played basketball all throughout high school as well. Um, and ran track, but I actually never really liked track. <laughs> I did not like track. You though. didn't like track? No. What was, what was the, uh, what were you, what was your event? Um, I tried all of them. I tried the 100, the 200, the 400. You didn't like it? I didn't like any of them. You know, I was not fast. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know. I don't know. I'm definitely faster than I was, uh-huh. but like, I just did not enjoy track <laughs> at Wasn't all. the move? No. Cross no. country? I actually never did cross country. Mm. I think because cross country was always in the fall mm-hmm. for us, and that's when my high school soccer season was. Got you. So, got you. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and then uh, so you transition, and then do you remember? Uh, so how does how does like getting uh, a like a scholarship work? Mm-hmm. Like, so you have a scholarship for like to play soccer at Georgia Southern, mm-hmm. correct? How like do you remember? 
like the were scouts coming out to watch you play like do you remember any of that oh yeah i remember the recruiting process like, okay talk to it me was about yesterday that. Uh-huh. in um good and bad ways oh, because really? it is different it is something i hope i'm thankfully do not have to go through again um but you know i will take my experience and try and help others as much as i can because mm. it was crazy okay um but no i mean you start as early as possible freshman year um, high you know, school? Yes, high school. You, It's more through club. Um, I know for football and, like, other sports like that, like, they'll recruit you f- through, like, high school mm-hmm. um, because there's obviously no, like, high school football teams but um, or club co- uh, football teams. Got you. But um, started freshman year, you go to showcases, you email all these coaches. So it's a lot of pressure. Like, you will tell a coach to come to um, a game – and then you have to perform there. You know, like it's a lot of pressure. And I actually told my friends this. My first ever coach I ever emailed was Anson Dorrance at the University of North Carolina. <laughs> and North Carolina is like okay. the Power one of the house. best like soccer schools ever. But I'm like, hey, um, Coach Dorrance, come to my game. Um, you know, so it's like it's it's nerve wracking. Yeah, it is. Um but obviously, like, you have to evaluate, like, your current situation and, you know, your level of play. Um, but, yeah, no, the recruiting process. Did, did she come? No, he did not. Oh, okay. No, he he didn't. didn't. Okay. At least I don't think he did. <laughs> and if he did, clearly I didn't do well enough because. <laughs> uh, are you usually able to, so, like, the people that you invite to the soccer games, um, are you, do you usually, like, see them or do you, like, actually interact with them? Or is it mainly, like, they're just in the stands and then no, you're just, like, yeah. playing your heart out? They're just sort of there. Uh-huh. I don't I don't remember ever talking to, like, a college coach, like, after, um, like, a game, mm. you know. But, I, I mean, I would remember – I know, like, my dad would, like, go, like, see which ones are there and then tell me <laughs> well, after. Will you talk to them? Yeah, I no, no. Oh, no, he no. didn't approach? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> And if a parent were to do that, like, you're not going to that school. Is that really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Why? Because, I mean, it's like that. It's like t- taboo to yeah. kind of like approach it like that? Yeah. Gotcha. Like, if I'm a college coach and I'm recruiting a player and their parent comes up to me and like, hey, you see my little Sally over there? Like, oh, no. I think it's just mainly about, like, the conversation. Right, right yeah. But, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he ever did. <laughs> I mean, now that might have I, shut down some opportunities for yeah, you. Yeah, maybe. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Honestly, now that I think about it, I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, yeah. No, the recruiting process it's it's definitely something different. But it's funny because I used to go to so many um, ID camps, mm-hmm. the identification camps that you go to, and you perform at the school in front of the coaches. And I went to so many. How many did you go to? Oh my goodness! Everywhere everywhere like think of a school i probably went it's cr- like I every went, single school not every single one <laughs> but i mean did a, you did you mainly uh do it in the area that you were in or are you just like across like the whole u.s yeah so i've always wanted to go down south uh-huh. like just um what you like about the south the weather really yeah it's hot yeah you but like i like heat? it i do i like it a lot it's so different than ohio obviously mm. But um, no, I've always just wanted to. I've always had family in Florida Mm. and that like family vacation we'd always go on, like it would be the best week of my life Mm. just because of the weather. And I remember I was on vacation one day and I'm like, how can I feel like this every single day? (laughs) And I found out a way. Here I am. So, um, but yeah, I've always wanted to, but it's funny that I'm at Georgia Southern because I had never, I've been to so many ID camps, but I never, I ended up going to a school at a place where I didn't go to their camp. You didn't go. So, okay. Walk me through that process. How'd they find you? Yeah. So they reached out to me. Um, I think it was through, I had a recruiting profile at the time to kind of help me out because I committed very late. Um, It's actually very normal for um, athletes to commit like their freshman or sophomore year. Mm -hmm. Like it's so crazy. And looking back, like I couldn't imagine committing any earlier than I did. I committed the fall of my senior year of high school so that's like considered late yeah um but they reached out to me and i was actually heading down to florida i'm pretty sure i don't it was a very quick transition they called me and they were like come on a visit and i was like okay and my dad and i were in the car like the next day yeah um so yeah that happened super fast but they they did reach out to me yeah um 
So, uh, do you know how they, like they found your? So you mentioned a scouting profile. Mm-hmm. Is that something that is uh, like like a website that you're putting like tape on, mm-hmm. or like you know, do you, is there videos of you like a profile, so forth and so on? Is yeah, that what it looks like. It is. It's just like that. So you have you know your position, your name, um, some film that you want to put on there, and then coaches will go on and you'll have your position as well, so they can look up like I'm looking for a midfielder, and then I could pop up. Oh, that's or cool. Something. Yeah. So I, um, that's how it sort of came about. Yeah. But. And then uh, when you came to Georgia Southern, how was that? Oh, what'd it was you, what, awesome. What did you think of little old Statesboro? So I actually came when the weather was like amazing. Okay. So that like sold me <laughs> right off the bat. Um, but no, it was also the girls too. Oh. Um, you know, the people here, like they were just awesome, still are. But um, yeah, I had a great visit. And I ended up, I think, committing about like a month later. Mm-hmm. So it worked out. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, when you are going through like a, a process like this, uh, do you did you have any uh, nervousness, or was that always like kind of like part of like the decision, right? Because when you're making a decision like this, there's uh, of like, hey, where where to go? Um, was that a difficult decision for you? It was in a sense, but also um, I sort of stayed true to, you know, what is most important to me. So that's location. um, That's like level of play, academics, huge role in it, um, you know, culture. Like there's a lot of different aspects that went into it for me. So when I came on my visit, you know, I looked through my list and I'm like, okay, does it check all the boxes? Mm. Um, And when I realized it did, I'm like, okay, this could be a good opportunity for me. You know, and at the time, like I said, I was late to committing. Sure. So it was a point in time where, like, I really had to trust that process. Mm -hmm. Um, And when it came about, I was like, you know, I'm going to think about it. I'm going to pray about it. And if this is where I'm supposed to be, it's going to happen. And I am lucky enough to where it turned out to be, you know, a great decision because not all athletes get to have this great experience where they're at a place for four years, five years, and they really, truly enjoy it. You know, the amount of people that have transferred, you know, over time, it's it's crazy yeah. to me because, you know, me and most of my teammates, like, we're lucky enough to have a place where, like, we love the school, the academics. We love the girls. You know, we all get along. We don't have drama. We don't, Mm -hmm. you know, like it's just a a special, like good place. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, Let's talk about advice, you know, because obviously you've gone through this process. uh, You've kind of like experienced it. You know, if you had advice for somebody that was interested in playing um, uh, women's soccer, Mm -hmm. what would you tell them? Same thing. I would say, you know, make a list of things that are important to you. And that should be, like I said, location, culture, mm. um, academics. Do they have your program? Do they? Are you going to be set up for success? Um, and I would say, don't just commit to a place just because you want to commit, because that's when you're going to end up transferring, in mm. my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, thankfully I, I didn't have to do that. Um, but I think like that's why like girls that commit so young and so just like out of spur of the moment, like that's when you're going to look back and be like, dang, like I should have really considered what I was getting myself into, Mm -hmm. you know, but I mean, it's all, it's a part of the process. Like you live and you learn, but I would definitely say like, go with your heart and what's like most important to you. Mm -hmm. What's on the horizon? What you got like coming up after like, you know, um, after school? I mean, obviously you still have how many years are, are you, like, another two years? Yeah, so I'm going to be a senior this fall, and then I do have my COVID year, mm-hmm. my fifth year, my free year. You gonna Are you going to continue to play? Yes, I would like to. You've already made the decision? Mm-hmm. Nice. As of right now. Yep. And then really what like happens to. after that? What are you going to do? When you say, like, a COVID year, does that mean you just, like, you get a year where you can just play, or you, you still have to enroll in classes? I do still have to enroll. Just so, but any class that you want. Mm-hmm. So, so what are you going to take? I'm going to do... Soccer? <laughs> can I you wish. take soccer <laughs> i don't think we have a soccer class but that would be really fun <laughs> we have like tennis and bowling i would like to do golf oh the golf class there's one of those yeah um but i will be doing a one year like master's program okay um but then after that when i finish my fifth year i would like to go and be a grad assistant um 
and I guess in that case, get another master's degree because I'd like to be a GA in sport, uh, strength and conditioning. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be in school for a good another four years, probably. Excited? I am. You like school? I do. What do you Most like about school? I don't. I like the structure of mm. it. I like the responsibility, the grind of it. I guess. Yeah. Um, I mean, it would be. I don't want to look back and be like, oh, I should have went and got this degree when I had the opportunity. You know, like why stop? Yeah. You know, I'm just gonna keep on going. Cool. Well, Maya, I have to thank you for coming onto the show. How do people get in touch with you? Like, how do people follow you? Like, what are your you can follow me on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There it is. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, that's what Drop you're referring it. to. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. course. My Instagram, my name, Maya Zafko27. Uh-huh. It's my favorite number. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's all of my, that's like my Instagram and my Twitter. Yeah. Um, Big Twitter girl. Yeah. And my TikTok. Are you my, on? Maya Chipotle. <laughs> Maya Chipotle. I know. The one and only. I know. I like, I haven't came around to changing it. Mm-hmm. But it's just really grown on me, mm -hmm. and I just really like Chipotle. Are you big so. on Twitter? I am. I think so. Have you been on threads? Not yet. What are you waiting on? I don't know. I have, like, clicked on other people's things in their bio, mm -hmm. but I have not created an account yet. That's so interesting. Yeah. But you spend a lot, on, a lot of time on Twitter. What do you like about Twitter? I like <laughs> the controversy. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I really like the con controversy of it all. And I like the memes. They're really funny. Yeah. I see some funny stuff on Twitter. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming <laughs> on to the show. It was an absolute pleasure. Um, yeah. Best of luck to your future. I'm so excited to see all the stuff that you like continue to grow. I think, you know, on my end, I just every time I talk to you, it's just like, you know, it feels so uh, inspiring just because you c carry such a positive energy. And Thank then uh, into every, anything that you do, right? So regardless of if it's strength and conditioning, regardless, regardless of if it's influencing or whatever it is, I just see huge amounts of potential. In your Thank you. Awesome. That means a lot. Awesome.